What's up guys, this is Wes with Sin City Tactical and thank you for rejoining us. We know it's been quite some time since we've been on and done a live. Uh, we all had some personal things going on with our families and such and uh, enjoying holidays and things of that nature. We are back and we plan on staying back for quite some time. The next time that a hiatus will come into play, in the event that a hiatus does come into play, We'll be sure to notify everybody as well. Um, as you'll see throughout the show, a lot of things have changed to try to bring better production quality to what we're providing for you guys, and hopefully you guys enjoy the show. Let's go. It's just great to be here. I have a month and a half and I'll be 97 years old. And it's great to be living in this country for better or worse. It's the best country there is. The people don't like this country, especially the ones that don't honor the national anthem or the, uh, the uh, Pledge of Allegiance or flag there. I'll help them move to another country. They think there's another country better than ours. For better or for worse, it's the best country there is. Thank you very much. All right, so that was our patriotic message. As you'll see, we're going to try to incorporate a lot more of that type of content to our videos, where it's, we're going to try to dedicate a show to a soldier, World War II vet, Vietnam vet, um, some type of military personnel we want to be able to bring them to light and give them exposure. Uh, we are very grateful for our armed forces, and we would want to continue to show that. Uh, one of our members... In the Sin City Tactical brand is former military himself, um, and I guess we can we can call it like the Marines do. Um, once in the military, always in the military. He'll live by that for the rest of his life. So I'm definitely grateful to have him, and let's bring him in. What's up, Jax? What's up? Long time no see. I know we had that hiatus. Glad to see you. You know, come up here and pull me back into work. Well. Huh? absolutely had to um so some of you guys might have caught that video clip of me up in minnesota um and doing the little commercial thing that i did with them um i was up there for some family reasons i had a family member pass away which is what uh caused the trip to go up there um to begin with so uh that's one of the reasons why we took a hiatus we had like i said some family stuff going on but we are moving forward in the right direction, and we want to keep that moving. Uh, I do want to dedicate this show to Sandy McFadden. That was a cousin of mine that had passed away, which I went to Minnesota to uh, show my respects to and pay my respects to. So with that being said, we're going to move right into the show. The first thing we're going to do is our Pro 2A News. The Pro 2A News, today we're talking about... Um, a young female in Virginia, 18 years old, went into a firearms store, a legal firearms dealer, to be able to purchase a pistol. Um, as we all know that firearms dealers, um, gun stores, are not going to sell a pistol to an 18-year-old. The question that leads to that is why. If you're 18 years old, you're considered an adult, and you're able to go into a gun store and buy a rifle and or a shotgun. In my opinion, a rifle, once it's scoped, you can hit much, much farther and do a lot more damage. Um, but you're allowing people at the age of 18 years old to buy those type of weapons, um, and including shotguns in a close range environment that can create a lot of havoc as well. If any of you guys caught the Chucker uh, funny blooper video that we did, I kind of went crazy on some chuckers. Um, what's up, Sean Kelly? Thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, shout out to Layton. He was in that video as well. And if you guys haven't checked out the New Zealand Ram Hunt video, that is featuring Mr. Sean Kelly himself. He uh, was the one that was doing the hunting in that video. So big shout out to uh, those guys. And a shout out to Hoffaday Ranch for putting that on with all of us. Um, but back to the Virginia woman trying to buy a pistol. Well, of course, she was denied 
for her claim to be able to purchase the pistol and uh, she decided to sue so she decided to sue the ATF which uh, that's pretty ballsy in my opinion well long story short she ended up actually winning that appeal um, which is miraculous but what I will say is like Jax he went into the military very young um, went and did what he did for our country and then comes back home and if he's under the age of 21 legally wouldn't be able to buy a pistol makes no sense to me when you put somebody who's 18 years old into a combat situation with fully automatic weapons um, and then come home and tell them that they're not old enough or they're not mature enough to handle that is uh, asinine in my opinion I do believe that there's a double standard when it comes to our pro 2a laws and that is definitely one of them and I feel like they need to address that situation with allowing people who are 18 years old to be able to purchase a firearm um, particularly your pistols <clears throat> they have the same right to defend themselves as anybody else and legally as an adult they should have the right to own and carry a pistol um, quite frankly they should be allowed to get their concealed weapons permits as well which gives them more training to make them more conscious of what's going on Jax your thoughts well brother my thoughts on it are kind of similar to yours when it comes to the overall ideal of the whole situation of itself her not being able to purchase one at that particular time being that she's 18 well let's face it any real gun law is unconstitutional you <clears throat> look at the second amendment it shall not be infringed upon so again a ballsy move on her part for actually taking on the ATF and roll the dice she won. But that's something you're probably going to start to see more and more of. And correct me if I'm wrong on this, brother, but uh, a lot of states lately have even been in court rulings getting rid of multiple different carry permit gun laws, including the requirement to have a carry permit due to the fact that it's unconstitutional to the Second Amendment. Absolutely. There's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of states and politicians, which is shocking me, that are, are defending the two-way situation, right? They're standing up and going, look, we're not going to uphold the federal law that you guys are trying to do. It's just not right. It's not, a, it's not constitutional. Um, and with that being said, when we speak constitutionally, right, does it physically say that you have the right to own a gun? No. It says you have the right to bear arms. Um, which implies owning a firearm. Otherwise, how else are you going to get it, right? So there, there's a gray area. All of these things have gray areas. Ultimately, what it comes down to is, as a law-abiding citizen of this country, it is a right that was written that I have the right to bear arms, which means if I have it, I have the right to bear it. Um, I'm not against gun control like we've talked about before. Um, I feel like there is a need for it um, in certain instances, right? We all don't want the psychopath to get his hands on a gun um, at all. But the law-abiding citizens like Mr. Sean Kelly, who's an avid hunter, his rights shouldn't be impeded upon because he is a hunter. He goes out, hunts, brings fee uh, food back to his family to be able to eat um, and to take care of his, of his family, just like you and I. I use my firearms in a sport recreational setting, but in the event that I needed to use them to protect my family, absolutely I will do so. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And once again, it all goes back down to the fact that in the event that the government takes our guns away, they're going to use guns to control us more. Um, that is why the Pro 2A movement is so important because once the guns are taken, we have no way to keep our country from turning into a dictatorship, which I strongly believe is going to happen. I mean, look at Cuba, for example. They're protesting right now. They've been protesting. They're tired of being in a state of communism. They want freedoms and rights and everything else as well, um, and they're tired of it, so they're rebelling. They are protesting, and they're fighting for their freedom. Um, obviously, America knows a little bit about that fighting for our freedom 
um, and we do it all the time. Sometimes when we shouldn't even be doing it, we stick our nose into things. So for that's the probably the biggest thing is our country is very hypocritical, right? In the sense that, no, oh, we want to take all the guns away because it creates more violence and it does this and it does that and it does this, but yet we're willing to go stick our nose in some other country's business, send our American 18-year-old men and women to other countries to go fight a war that doesn't really involve us. Um, that's pretty hypocritical to say you don't want violence, but yet you stick your nose in a lot of wars. Um, I'm very, very patriotic. I'm very about our country. I just feel like our government is only in favor for themselves. They don't <laughs> want us to succeed. Indeed. And, you know, I mean, it just kind of goes back to the whole hypocrisy thing there when it comes down to it. You know, it's either you, you want us to be free or you're trying to have a dictatorship over the entire country and if the guns end up getting taken away ultimately that's what's going to happen and so i agree with you the whole pro 2a movement right now especially is is a big thing absolutely so one thing that uh i'm going to mention here as you can see the shirt that i'm wearing is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing and uh it says awaiting valhalla my family is Norwegian, um, so I, I'm very into the Viking um, lore and mythology and, and all that stuff. It's part of my heritage. Um, and all I'm going to say is, to my Viking background, I lost my guns in a boating accident. Yep. That's, that's all I can say to that. But uh, we are going to keep it moving. We'll talk a little bit more about shirts. Um, this is actually an athletic dry fit shirt, and it's an all-over print type of shirt. Um, I absolutely love the way that it feels, but we'll get into that a little bit later into the show. we got a bunch of new merch and stuff going on. But now we're going to move into our tactical gear review. For my tactical gear review item, we are going over the Elite Tactical System Speed Loader for Rifle Magazines. So there's a plunger. The actual speed loader itself and I've used it with AK-47 I've used it with AR-15s what you do is you take the back track line it up across the top as you'll see there's a channel here where you place your rounds there's grooves on the inside to grab the rim around the cartridges that does work with multiple different calibers you then take the plunger slide it over the top and you will force the bullets down into the magazine. This is one of my favorite tools when it comes to range days and things like that. Um, me personally, I like to preload my magazines before we go out to go shooting. Um, I do have a little over 40 magazines, I believe, for the AR-15 platforms. Um, as you can see, I have a couple of AR-15s up on the wall here. And uh, I'll take a mixing bowl, dump all the bullets into the bowl, and just sit there and load every single magazine that I possibly can so that I'm not trying to load it out in the field. But in the event that you don't do that, this is a handy tool to get you back up and running, especially if you go to an indoor range um, and you're paying by the hour to physically be there. You can load your magazines quite quickly with this Elite Tactical System Speed Loader. Now I'll play a clip from Elite Tactical Systems themselves demonstrating how this speed loader works. So let's get started. It's very simple to use. You're going to pick up your magazine. You're going to place the loader over the spine of the magazine. Make sure that the feed lips are fully seated at the top of the loader. Then you're going to use this loader rail to slide over and pick up 10 rounds of ammo. I like to turn it on its side like this. Pick up your plunger and plunge the rounds home. It's that simple. So today's tactical gear review item, I know I kind of touched base on it back in the day, but camo netting. It's an age old tool. And first we're gonna talk about how the military uses them and what their main purpose is, plus other everyday tactical situation uses that you could even use as civilians. So let's get into it, shall we? Those camo, nettings that you see behind me and behind Griff 
back in the day civilian sided ones for sure definitely not nearly as thick and as heavy duty as the ones that we used during my time in the national guard so to go further into detail on that i'm going to start out by saying the camo netting itself was made for stringing over vehicles to ghillie suits used by snipers it breaks up electronic or heat signatures and so obviously the money that the army and the marines and basically the u.s military has spent um is definitely become more so about survivability with each shade of camel that the camel nets come in for the u.s troops which will include your light and dark woodland your snow and alpine and your desert slash urban variants of your desert cam so with that being said civilian side you could definitely use it as shelter from the sun you can use it as cover and a hunting situation for all you avid hunters out there you go ahead and throw it up in front of your deer blind definitely again camouflage you know don't want to go out camping and forget that if you're sleeping out in a tent it also provides you some tent cover in the woods so this way you're not easily um, noticed per se by the animals out in the woods or a unlucky situation you end up having to deal with somebody that's trying to rob you for their own personal survival game anywho that was just a short tidbit on camo netting again it's an age-old tool and we're going to move forward with the show introducing the dh3 trigger the world's best multi-gun shooter daniel horner and the world's leading trigger manufacturer timney triggers set out to create the ultimate ar style trigger that can withstand a lifetime of competition after almost 15,000 rounds fired, our professional shooters and trained trigger finger experts could feel no difference from the first to the last pull of the DH3 trigger. The conclusion? The DH3 trigger passed the test with flying colors and clanging steel. How good is your trigger finger? Our DH3 trigger would love to find out. All right, so that was our tactical gear review items for the week. Um, unfortunately, Griff is unavailable right now. The Daniel uh, Trigger is his item. Unfortunately, he's not here, but we'll talk about it a little bit as well. The, uh, the speed loader, as you might have heard in the video, I like to put the bullets into a bowl. Um, you can also do it how the Elite Tactical Systems uh, video went, where you can just pick up the rounds from the box itself. Um, you can actually, so sometimes you get uh, like tw uh, 20 round boxes where you go and open the flap and it's not going to grab it obviously because the casings are too far down. If you rip the side tabs down just to where the rim of the cartridge is sticking out, you can still get that track through there. Um, I personally like putting it into a bowl because I'll put hundreds of rounds into a bowl and I'll, I like to just sit there and load them one by one while I'm watching TV or something kills a little bit of time. Um, but ultimately, it's a good tool for at the range, at home, loading your magazines, works super quick. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in that video as well, like I said, I've used it on AK-47, so that's 762 by 39. I've used it on my 556, my 223. It also works with 9mm, so my Scorpion magazines it would work on. Um, it's, it's a fantastic tool to have. So... Uh, definitely something you want to look into. They're about 40 bucks, I believe, maybe a little bit less than that, from ETS, uh, what is it? It's ETSgroup.com, ETSgroup.com. That'll get you to where the uh, speed loaders are. They also have them from different platforms as well. Um, Jax, as you can see, he's got his camo netting up behind him. Um, typically, when you use that, do you double layer it so it doesn't completely show through, or is it a single layer setup? Um, kind of explain a little bit more in detail, because you have a lot of light coming through that back end, and I can kind of see through it. So 
what would you say is the best way to use that in your particular application if you were trying to, to fully camouflage? So for a tacticalized situation, obviously this is, you know, cheap civilian one that I found off of Amazon that I picked up. But if if I were you, I'd go ahead and devil ones like this up. But the standard issue ones, obviously, that I dealt with a lot in my time in the Army, they were a lot thicker uh, material in and of itself. So you didn't necessarily have to devil it up to get the full coverage for making a hasty shade area or covering up a Humvee or, you know, making a tactical kind of firing point off of the back of one of the LHSs or PLSs on a flat rack. So the nice part about it is that, uh, again, like I said in the video, it has many different tacticalized uses. Sure, right now I've got it up as a backdrop, but let's say I decided I was going to go camping for the weekend. I wanted to throw it over the back of the rear end of my Honda element and create, you know, kind of a uh, not so much a hidden from the sun, but hidden from everybody else's sight for the most part. I could do that with this. You can also hide your tent with it in the middle of the field, things of that nature. And again, when it comes to worst case scenario, pardon my French here, shit hitting the fan, you set it up and you can make a firing point wherever you decided to drop gear and set up base okay what what is a camo net like military grade cost i know there's a lot of military surpluses in a lot of cities um particularly out here in vegas my favorite one to go to is hans um, he's got a lot of cool stuff but what does something like that typically cost you know that's a good question it really i guess is all going to depend on your surplus dealer and what they're trying to make profit on it yeah. I think there's one out at CC Surplus here out in Maplewood, and uh, that I think runs at closer to a hundred bucks for that. But it's it's definitely not. I think this one's a six foot by four, and I think the ones they're selling are really only three, three and a half feet. So basically, just enough to put over a tent, you know, or create a smaller shade spot. Well, that's cool. Camo netting is always something I've been interested in. I haven't really messed with it too much. I mean, as you can see, my background, I've just, I've got some, it's more of a tarp. It's a digital desert camo tarp that I uh, put up on the wall just because I like the appearance of it. Um, that That is a good idea, though, because, like, my tent is blue and, like, green and black, blue, green, and black-ish. Uh, from the inside, it, it's one of those dark room tents to where it's supposed to, like, completely be pitch black inside no matter what it is outside but that is a good point like if i wanted to be off somewhere not even in a shit hits the fan situation but just in general i want to be off grid kind of you know just go enjoy my camp spot having something like that could uh i feel like potentially deter a lot of things from happening whether it be animals or whatever the case may be because we uh we may be a predator but we're not the only predators out there that's for sure so like Recently, for example, we have a lot of coyotes and stuff that are coming down into the city and killing dogs and stuff. We've seen mountain lions down in the city because uh, they're starting to expand um, housing developments. So they're kind of forcing animals out of their spots and uh, they're making their way down in here. We had a bobcat or it was either bobcat or mountain lion that was down in the city for like two weeks and it kept getting reported. You know, like those ring doorbells? Yeah where they have like a neighborhood watch app or whatever in like a three week span i saw this mountain lion on there like 50 times at least so there's animals out there that could get you but i want to move into the trigger a little bit so timney triggers they come in like three pounds two pounds five pounds adjustable from five down to two flat faced uh, anodized curved like a mil spec trigger and things like that fantastic drop-in triggers absolutely fantastic that particular trigger um, is a like special edition timney trigger but even the basic timney uh, timney triggers are fantastic um, 
very good for drop-ins. They allow you to get a little bit more control. I like adjustable triggers or uh, the ALG Defense, which you'll see on my AR pistol, that little silver trigger that's up there. That trigger um, is very nice. I kind of like the mil spec feel on rifles, but flat on pistols. Why? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's more of a control thing for me. But um, man, I tell you what, ARs are Legos, dude. You start dropping pieces in, you can fine tune trim springs and different buffer weights and, and make your rifle how you want it for the application that you're trying to use. Um, what is your experience with with a, a mil spec trigger versus like a trigger on um, one of the rifles that you and Griff have gone and shot together? Okay, so obviously, you know, mil spec, you're going to have a heavier uh, buffer spring in it. So your trigger, to me, it felt pretty light. I mean, obviously, as far as reset even went, it was kind of a click, click, and then you're ready to release next round. But I've shot a few uh, different styles of triggers that, you know, we've tossed in AR-15s, and some have less of a trigger pull, like where you barely even have to pull on it at all to send the round flying. And then, again, you know, you got the five-pound or whatever, where you have to put a little bit more force behind it when you're pulling the trigger back. And personally again like you were talking with the pistol one i personally for my preference like the lighter trigger pull myself just because hey if i'm in a situation whether i'm shooting comp or self-defense kind of thing and i'm shooting a rifle with that kind of a trigger in it i want to be able to send rounds down range <laughs> as fast as possible without having to have a chunky trigger pull and then a large reset. So you don't like my revolver then, is what you're telling me. Because my revolver has a nasty, nasty length of pull on it. It's it's one of the roughest triggers. And if you don't let it reset properly, the cylinder don't move. It's a headache it's in that in that <laughs> aspect. It's a 38 special, it's a cool little snub nose two inch uh, snub nose revolver I like I like it it's just you're not getting rounds down quick if you try to blast that trigger that's not going to happen but then you put my SIG uh, 320 X5 in my hand and that's got a flat faced real real light trigger on it and I'll unload I'll dump with that thing real quick um, and then speaking of pistols we'll move to the CZ Scorpion which is a pistol, thank you. Yes. Um, that thing, all in load. As you guys saw in the intro video, I love that. That is probably the favorite, uh, my favorite gun that I have currently. Um, my FDE-ish AR-15 has a really light trigger in it. That's that ALG defense um, trigger. And then uh, the one behind me, this little AR-9, also has an ALG defense trigger in it. But, ironically enough, my favorite trigger on any of the guns has got to be on that M1 carbine. That thing oh, yeah. is solid, smooth, right? So, just a little note on that one. That is a uh, October of 1944 stamped inland M1 carbine. That's the legit real deal right there. So that thing's uh, definitely seen combat. It's got the bayonet lug on it. It's it's insane. So and I actually got rounds for it. Believe it or not, I've got rounds for it, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got the extended mag on it too. It's got the 15 round mag on it. Uh, speaking of magazines, you can see on my 12 gauge shotgun here, it's got a 10 round mag on it. Um, so if anybody would like to test my front door, by all means. Um, kidding that's just cheating Wes. <laughs> hey go watch the chucker hunt video and you tell me if that was cheating okay <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say to that uh, but we're gonna keep it moving go ahead i was gonna say it is cheating when everybody else is sitting there and after like five six rounds they're out you still have four more in your magazine oh dude i'm dumping boom 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 keep it moving uh, all right, so we're going to move into our shout-outs and sponsors.
All right. So, as you saw in the shout outs and sponsors, little video. First, I would like to thank Wendy from Sight Shooter. Uh, even with the hiatus, she has stayed strong with us on Patreon. Both divisions have their own Patreon account. Um, so, Sin City Tactical or Sin City MN Division has their own Patreon account as well. Um, by donating to the Patreons, that allows us to continue to do the show. Um, gives us a way to get better content to you guys, get better things for the Tactical Gear Reviews, and overall be able to make the brand stronger to provide you guys with better content. Um, I personally have vowed that donations that are given to the Patreon um, on the Sin City Las Vegas side, um, we're going to take some of the proceeds and make little uh, care package bags, which would include like mini toothbrush and toothpaste and um, some deodorant and food and things like that to hand out to um, homeless veterans. That is a big problem out here in Vegas. We have a bunch of VAs, but a lot of military vets that are homeless out here, and that's a way for us to give back, is to try to give them care packages. So when you do donate through the Patreon, there are different levels. Um, I believe it's $15 a month, $25 a month, or $50 a month. Um, and that makes you a uh, founder of the brand when you go to the $50 mark. But we also understand that right now, especially with COVID times, that not everybody is going to have that type of money financially to donate to um, Sin City Tactical. So on the Anchor platform, Sin City Tactical has one, and so does Sin City MN Division or Sin City Tactical MN Division. They also have an anchor. You can do smaller amount donations, and it's not a monthly reoccurring thing. By that means, um, plus you can donate through Twitch and things like that as well. So we greatly appreciate anything that you guys um, are willing to help us out with. Um, my next shout out goes to Tac Pack. You can use our code SC Tactical to get a free mystery grab bag. You will receive a package once a month that has between five and seven items um, that are hand selected for you. And it's a long range of things between hats and gloves and AR 500 steel plates. I think me and Griff have gotten about three or four different plates and muzzle brakes and magazines and a bunch of different things for you guys to try. The boxes typically are valued higher than what the cost of the monthly subscription is. They're able to do that when you stay on the monthly subscription. So ordering one box and hopping off, um, they take a loss in that end. So uh, sticking with it is really good. I've gotten a lot of really good items from them. But that's what I have for my shout outs and sponsors. Jax? All right. So on my end, I know Griff's not here, so I'm going to go ahead and get it done and out of the way with first. I want to go ahead and shout out our good buddy G3 over at G3Survival.com. And, again, it's not just Griff's opinion. It's mine as well. He is probably one of the finest, if not the best, at least in the state of Minnesota that I've come across for leather-made wraps for your firearms, as well as your own customized stamp choice of uh what's on his website i think uh griff is still working with him off to the side right now getting him new stamps made for his die but check out the website he also has a page on our website www dot or excuse me sin city tactical dot <laughs> xyz you can't put the www dot before that or it doesn't work for some reason but i don't know why Go ahead and uh, check some of that stuff out over there. And G3, if you come across this, it's good to uh, be back on, and hopefully you'll be watching the show again here soon, too. Secondly, I want to go ahead and shout out uh, TACX Pro Gear. Use the code OVERLANDER25 to get 25% off your purchases at TACXProGear.com and 15% off your purchase at ncca which is your national concealed carry association.com they also have some pretty cool gear out there it's not necessarily anything as fancy as tack pack but definitely um useful things for edc situations uh cleaning items shooting c targets things of that nature matter of fact um 
got a radiator, for instance. Little magazine holster inside the waistband. These things, I mean, they fit comfortably on the inside of your waistband. And in my opinion, for the material it's made out of, it's pretty decent for what you pay for it. So, lastly, I want to go ahead and shout out b &E Music. They are coming out with new stuff nonstop. I know they've had uh, many gigs and that over in Minneapolis. So, go ahead and check those guys out on YouTube as well and show them some love. Absolutely. Um, forgot to mention as well, as you guys can see, the backgrounds on the actual show. Those QR codes are scannable. The one directly underneath me will take you to the Sin City Tactical homepage, the main website um, for our brand. The one underneath Jax will take you directly to the Sin City Tactical MN page. On there, you're going to find a bunch of brand new gear, new merchandise, new types of shirts and designs. Matter of fact, a new one that's come out recently that you guys may not have seen is that shirt that he's wearing right now. Go ahead and stand up. So this one is the Come and Take It Molan Labe shirt. Absolutely. So we've got that in both the regular Sin City Tactical and the MN Division. We have the Awaiting Valhalla shirts in both MN and in Sin City Tactical. Um, actually, I'll be right back, give me one second. So we're starting to try to get into uh, making these shirts a little bit more um, designer wear, where it's more comfortable materials and things like that. So here's another Awaiting Valhalla um, Sin City Tactical shirt. This is a dry fit shirt. What you're seeing in the background is the mountains and the northern lights from Norway. On the back, you can help us represent the brand with our social media links. Um, and as you can see, the MN Division does have their own separate uh, links underneath Jax's camera view there. But this is the type of content that we're trying to get out there for you guys. Each one of these shirts does cost more than what our regular printed shirts like Jax is wearing. Um, but with these shirts, they are special limited edition shirts. These are not going to stay on the website for very much longer. Um, I'd say probably another two months or so they'll be on the website still. And I'm going to be taking 15% of all of those orders and using that to donate to Safe Tree, which is a women and, or women's and children's battered, battered shelter. Um, so I want to help them out especially coming into the months where, you know, Halloween's going to be coming, Thanksgiving, Christmas, things like that. We want to be able to help provide for them. One thing that we're going to be doing as well later on, and of course this is far off, we're talking more towards Christmas time, me, Jonna, and my family are going to go out into the woods and we're going to cut down trees. And what I, what I mean by cut down trees is we're going to go cut down Christmas trees. Then we're personally going to take Christmas trees with lights in a stand and go donate to the Safe Tree um, Shelter because we want to give them hope that life is going to get better. Um, and of course, donate to kids that aren't able to get presents. Okay, so look out for that stuff. Check out the websites. Both of those QR codes work. And now we're going to move right into our red button news. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Red Button News, presented by Jax from Sin City Tactical Minnesota Division. It's been great to be back so far here on the show, but today's story comes from Chicago. A man has been charged in the shooting of two undercover federal agents and a Chicago police officer in an unmarked vehicle early Wednesday. The 28-year-old Chicago man faces one count of using a dangerous and deadly weapon to assault a special agent from the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Illinois. The charge is punishable by a maximum sentence of 20 years in federal prison, the office said. 
The man was taken into custody Wednesday evening and scheduled to make an initial appearance in federal court Thursday afternoon. The three officers were driving on to the I-57 freeway just before 6 a.m. Wednesday morning when they were fired upon from the street, police said. The driver of a white Chevrolet Malibu, later identified as the suspect, pulled alongside the officer's vehicle, rolled down his window, and began shooting, according to the federal indictment. One of the agents was hit in the hand and one in the torso, and the Chicago cop was grazed in the back of the head, police said. They were taken to Advocate Christ Medical Center in stable condition and released Wednesday evening. According to the federal indictment, the man told officers following his arrest that he fired on their vehicle because he thought rival gang members were inside. The man told officers a friend had informed him a similar car had been seen surveying the area. The man told officers that he purchased the 9mm pistol a few months ago, according to the indictment. At least 36 Chicago officers have been shot at or shot so far in 2021, police superintendent David Brown said on Wednesday. They're risking everything to protect the people of Chicago, Brown said. He added, this is a very challenging time to be in law enforcement. All right, so with the red button news stuff, once again, this goes back to the gun violence, but we're going to go ahead and let Jax talk about his red button news. Yeah, so, you know, obviously, as you've seen in the video clip, Chicago had that happen. Obviously, last year up here in Minnesota, and even this year with the Brooklyn Park situation, we've had cops involved in many different things. And those are the cops that give the cops that are being shot at out there uh, while they're trying to serve and protect the communities that they live in. And, you know, once they're off the clock and have the uniform off, no badge on, they're just a normal civilian like me and Wes and all you guys out there. Obviously, however, there are some people that don't take that into account even when they are in uniform. And view them as the enemy so to say and it's it's kind of sad that there's this much basically in my opinion retaliation against law enforcement for ungodly known reasons just because oh well this cop and this cop made a poor choice so now all cops are bad in my well, opinion don't you i don't know think that's how gun control is one guy goes and creates havoc, and then everybody's, you know, bad that has a well, gun. See, here's the thing. I agree with gun control to a point, but I don't think we need gun control. I think we need idiot control. Yeah. I, I have no comeback for that. That is 100% fact. We need to uh, deal with it in a different way. I, I don't really want to tread too much into the Chicago and riots and everything else because I feel like that's that's being played out a lot um, ultimately what it comes down to is be a better human being everyone and we won't have problems that's what it comes down to people are so you know oh I'm left or I'm right or I'm this or I'm that why live your life don't put yourself in harm's way don't cause problems do your job as a civilian of this country, make our country better, now worse. That's all I got to say on that. Yeah. Well, uh, the last thing I'm going to say, and I'll take this quote exactly, well, not word for word from Adam Calhoun, but uh, keep it short and simple here. Uh, you know, when it really comes down to it, it doesn't matter whether you're left or right. I'm not going to judge you on your religious beliefs, your political beliefs. I judge you based off your character. You could be far far right, far left, doesn't matter. As long as you treat me with respect, you're going to get that reciprocated to you. 100%. Absolutely. All right. We're coming towards the end of the show here, guys. We are going to move into our EDC How and Why.
All right, so that's a very sad video because it is reality. This happens all the time. A um, little short story before we get into it completely. Back in the day in the home that I grew up in, there was a crosswalk directly, literally. So here's the house. Here's the street. Right across that other side of the street was an elementary school, big park, and everything else. This crosswalk was never really well lit. There was no stop signs. There was no real indicator that there's a crosswalk there. And the street was not very well lit. Um, Halloween night, uh, I'd say nine years ago now, nine, ten years ago now, two little girls were crossing the street and were run over by a car. The speed limit's 35 miles an hour on that street. The car was going at least 50. One of the little girls pushed her sister out of the way and the other one did not make it she uh, died right there on the scene so when I see a video like this it reminds me that we had the corner house or have the corner the cor exact corner house right where that crosswalk is so we could hear it all happen from inside the house um, and and you knew what it was before you even stepped outside um, those little girls were maybe eight and nine years old coming back from the park they lived in the same neighborhood I had seen them multiple times uh, it, it was just a very sad situation and then eventually it took a couple of years before they put up light up crosswalk signs and even then people still fly through that crosswalk um, as you saw in the video the guy was on his phone or whatever white Toyota truck kid went out to go get his ball of course kids are kids they don't necessarily stop to look first he wants his ball so he went to go get it got hit and as you saw in the video the the white car was gone um, but the other man the one in the black car had a medical first aid kit in his car me personally I keep a bunch of personal life facts in the vehicle one for me and anybody else um, who normally rides in my vehicle we all have enough IFAX in there to treat small trauma situations um, and I'm kind of glad that this video was played because it leads into our next segment um, which is where we talk about CLS the combat lifesaver training which is that's Jax's do uh, domain there so with that being said the first aid kits and things like that you can do a lot to help people by just being prepared you get a flat tire having your spare a jack that's not like a bottleneck jack or whatever or whatever comes with the car with the car is good to have but carrying a, a better jack a better tire iron things like that um, I carry emergency, uh, emergency food rations for um, up to seven days per person for a total of three people in my vehicle at all times I carry two tents air mattresses a uh, propane grill set up like little camping grill charcoal grill set up in my truck because I believe in redundancy if one fails I have a backup for my backup so literally I drive my truck around as a daily driver and I keep all of these supplies on me so if I break down I've got like three or four gallons of water in the back of my truck at all times too plus life straws water tablets to purify water way it means to start a fire um, there's so many different things you can do to be prepared um, and first aid kits is where it starts for me because you cannot successfully to take care of yourself and be prepared properly if you're hurt and it gets infected you're more likely to succumb to your injuries due to infection and things like that of that nature than you would be if you were just prepared and besides, we carry boo-boo kits in our car. I'm pretty sure Jax does as well. Band-Aids, aspirin, ibuprofen, uh, neosporin, acetaminophen, a bunch of stuff. Um, just so we have it. Because I deal with more like uh, John Love from uh, the Warrior Poet Society. I'll deal with more tummy aches and headaches than I will cuts and, and broken bones. But I want to be prepared for everything. And... A good reason to be prepared and if you guys have been watching the show for quite some time you'll remember when Jax was doing a demonstration and his shit broke in the middle yeah. of his demonstration so check your equipment check your gear and we're gonna let Jax talk about 
how his shit broke, why it broke, and what he did to fix the problem after it happened. Go ahead. Okay, so basically, I'm going to go into my spiel here and tie it for this week kind of into the CLS. Uh, and we'll start the game show up next week, being as this is our first show back. It's been a good show so far. Love having you guys watching. So thank you for being with us, even after that long hiatus. But as you guys, if you've been around for a while, seen there was an episode a while back where I was going through my IFAC, my first IFAC, mind you, and I was doing, you know, kind of an item show, this is this, and, and you have this and this kind of use for this item, this item works in this situation. I get to the compression bandage, and I'm doing a bit of a demonstration of how to put this bandage on and cinch it down. I get it wrapped around, get the bandage in the windlass clip, go to flip it back over the other way to tighten it, and the windlass clip snaps off cleanly so I could super glue it back on and fix it, thankfully. But, again, that, like Wes said, is a very, very good reason to always, always check your gear, especially if you're out there carrying an IFAC, whether it's medicine or, you know, uh, sanitizing wipes, alcohol wipes, things of that nature. Check expiration dates. Always, always, always. We talk about boo boo kits, so that's your band aid, your aspirin, your Tylenol, um, small gauze pads that you know you use with a bottle of rubbing alcohol to clean out out of small cut. Those types of things, you, you know, you don't really have to check too much, but you want to make sure your levels there are always you know stockpiled in case somebody ends up needing one or needing medicine. When it comes to the medicine, especially check those expiration dates. Uh, let's see what else in my new one. I've got medical scissors. I've got saline, all that other stuff. And those instances with like any major, you know, syringes of medicine food, you always want to make sure that you have fresh stuff that's not expired so this way and the need for it you're not looking at it and going oh well I, I could have saved this person's life by giving them this or help them with their issue by giving them this but I can't because it's, you know, it's expired so now you're kind of up shit's creek without a paddle and they're still suffering so and as yeah. far as keeping multiple different IFACs in my vehicle goes, usually I'm the only one in my vehicle unless my old lady's riding with me or I've got a buddy. I have my bug out, well, I'm not going to call it my bug out bag, my EDC bag. <laughs> yeah. That I have my IFAC attached to. And that usually goes everywhere with me unless I'm just running down the street to the gas station and back. You know, but definitely go do personal inventory, make sure everything's good to go. And I believe Wes had something that he didn't want to say. Yeah, so I wanted to add something into that. And I, I feel like this is a, a multi purposed item. Um, and it might shock a couple, a couple of people at what I'm going to say. It's, it's two pieces used for the same purpose. And it comes from the woman in your life, as long as she's not at menopause age. Okay? So, sorry all the women out there at menopause age. I apologize. But we apologize. <laughs> if you have women in your lives that are younger and still things are happening, carrying pads and or tampons in your IFAX is multi-purposed. Why? A, you don't want to be out at a restaurant and have to leave because of a situation. Secondly, it is a good use as a bandage. It really is. In the event that you don't have gauze or something like that to try to mitigate the blood to where it can clot, what does a pad do? It soaks up blood. 
it absorbs blood. If I have a gashing wound across my arm, I can put a pad on and wrap a shirt or something around it to apply pressure, and that pad, we all know, is going to absorb blood for like six hours, okay? Real stuff we're talking about here, people. It's something that you should keep in your in your IFAX, in your glove box, or something along the lines of that. Like I said, it's multi-purposed. Purposed. You can help the woman in your life, the kid in your life, whatever the case may be. Tampons. Bloody noses. Bullet wound. Boop. You're good. Bullet wound. You can literally... Stop it in. Dude. Packing a wound with a tampon. Uh, hello. How many people have seen the Tampax sport where the chick is like doing a high dive into the water and it's not going to leak because it's magic and all that fun stuff doesn't do anything all crazy, right? Boom, I can go swimming. Sharks aren't going to get me because the blood ain't leaking, right? So keep yeah. that in mind, people. There's your comedy segment for the uh, for the show. But in reality, pads can be used as bandages. Tampons can be used to stop bloody noses or to pack a wound there's a bunch of uses for it yeah and uh, just to kind of piggyback off of what Wes said real quick especially you know with the tampons when I was in still even during field training exercises you know they would always tell us hey you know look your IFAC runs out of medical gauze and it's kind of a heat in the moment situation if you got a female battle buddy with you that's carrying tampons on her because it's that time of month for her, if she has a spare one to save a battle buddy's life, it, it doesn't matter if it's used uh, supposed to be used solely for that one purpose. Yeah. If you pack that gauze into your battle buddy, you wrap them up tight, and you get them out of there. So yep. when it comes to packing wounds with it, sure, it may sound gross. Uh, I'm packing a bullet hole with you know, a tampon. And when it comes to saving a life, it doesn't matter how gross the situation may sound. I would rather stick something that shouldn't go here <laughs> and should be here on my significant other or, you know, my niece or whatever than to lose a battle buddy or possibly even my own life because I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, that's a tampon. That's gross. I'm not sticking that inside my wound. Or... At a party where your friend gets too drunk and he falls asleep, you can turn him into a walrus. Yes. Okay. That's a that's a necessary purpose as well. Uh, all right. Comedy section over. We are going to move into our CLS game show ish portion. So as you guys see on the screen now. We still have our QR codes up there. As you can see, Griff was unable to attend, so there's an unable to attend uh, spot there. Normally his camera would go there. As you can see, the scoreboard has been updated. We are starting new with this season. Um, we're not actually going to do any questions or anything. I just wanted to show you guys that this is something that you can participate in. In the event that you are a religious watcher you're on every time and you want to partake in this there is prizes if you can beat us out in the cls training um the last season we had a competition i'm pretty sure that uh me and griff ended up tied or i won i'm gonna yeah, say you, I won. you guys are tied whatever i won if you're not first you're last ricky bobby um, and I'm pretty sure mine said one West like this one currently does now. So with that being said, this is something that's fun. But in reality, we are talking about medical situations, how we talked about packing a wound with a tampon. If you get a bullet wound and it's a through and through, you need to be able to address that quickly. Because if you don't and they say you nick an artery or something, what are you going to do? Those are the type of situations that we get into in the CLS training. Jax has um, a military-grade CLS training booklet that he reads questions out of, and we have answers. Um, if you get the answer correct, um, you'll get a point. If you don't, you don't get a point. Um, and typically towards the end, there's gifts and prizes and stuff that can be won. And then, of course, we make bets. Speaking of bets, here we go. We're going to talk about it. 
Jax, coming close to October, this is when both of us will be fulfilling our bets. Um, Jax made a bet with Jonna, my daughter, and he now has to wear makeup and stuff on screen. Uh, we were playing Madden, and As if you anybody... Guys- you might have seen it. I was beating that ass really, 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 really bad. Okay? I made a bad decision and to let him tie that. it up to go into overtime. Then I lost. So now I have to also wear a dress and makeup. So what is going to end up happening is for our Halloween edition... Me and Jax will both be in dresses and makeup. Okay. So, putting that out there. Now it's been recorded. It's live. Everybody's seen it. We are going to push it for that uh, The Halloween year. special. Yeah, we'll make that a Halloween special. Okay. But we are going to wrap up the show, guys. We want to thank you for sticking it out with us for a little over an hour now. And uh, typically the show is going to run a little bit shorter than this. We just we had a lot to talk about since we've been gone for so long. Uh, thank you, guys. We're signing off, and we'll catch you on the next one. Catch you next week, guys. Bye.